Welcome back. In this segment video, we are going to be multiplying and dividing complex numbers. Complex numbers in polar form, we know now are represented using this format, r cosine theta plus i sine theta, where the r has been factored out in front. Shorthand notation for that is r cis theta, that's r c i s theta. And here we're working with two different complex numbers because we're gonna be multiplying them together. So we have them represented as Z1 and Z2. Notice that there are uh, different subscripts on those Z values and on the corresponding R and theta values. Multiplying those together, that question might be presented as simply as Z1, Z2. So there's a product wanted there. And in order to calculate the product, we're gonna multiply the corresponding r values together. We're going to add the theta values together, and we're going to put them right back into that same r cis theta format. This should be pretty easy. Let's look at a couple examples. Oh, by the way, before you multiply these numbers together, your two complex numbers have to already be in polar form. So we've got a little bit of preliminary work we need to do on these. Let's see about converting these two. If you plot this first point, it's going to appear in the first quadrant. Over one, up one, r is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared, which is the square root of one squared plus one squared, which is the square root of two. Uh, if you draw the triangle that corresponds to that, you're gonna have a horizontal leg of one, a vertical leg of one. If you use the inverse tangent function, you'll be taking the inverse tan of one which better return a theta value of positive 45 degrees. If you're getting a strange number when you take the inverse tan, maybe you're in radian mode, in which case the theta value that you got just got back is pi over four. Uh, I think I'll use radians for this one. I'm gonna call this r1 and theta one. Theta one is equal to pi over four because we're halfway up in the first quadrant. That's definitely a 45, 45, 90 triangle. This complex number. We'll need two tick marks in the horizontal and vertical direction. This point is out here at 2, 2. The r value you can calculate by taking again the square root of a squared plus b squared, which in this case is going to be the square root of 8, which simplifies to 2 root 2. This is also a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Side lengths of 2 and 2 in order to calculate the hypotenuse of a 45, 45, 90 triangle, we take the leg length and multiply it by root two. So that could have, should have been a pretty quick transition to get the R value of two root two. The theta value here again is going to be pi over four because we're still halfway up into the first quadrant. You would be taking the inverse tangent again of one, positive one. Okay, so now we have our r and theta values. If you would like to take these and actually write these complex numbers in polar form, you are welcome to do that. It's not really necessary because if you look toward the top of your screen, what we need to do now is find the product of our r values and the sum of our theta values and sort of fill in the blanks of that format. So I think I might rewrite the format right down here and say that z1 times z2 is equal to r1 times r2 times the cosine of theta1 plus theta2 plus i times the sine of theta1 plus theta2. And let's fill in some blanks. So we have an r1 value of 2 and the r2 value was two root two, cosine of pi over four plus pi over four plus i times the sine of, again, pi over four plus pi over four. Now let's get to writing a final answer in polar form. The coefficient is four times the square root of two Cosine of pi over four plus pi over four is equal to pi over two. 
plus i times the sine of pi over 2. This is your final answer for the product of those two complex numbers written in polar form. What if I wanted to take this number, because what we're looking at really is a number, a complex number in polar form, and express it in the more standard a plus bi format. You could do that by evaluating the cosine and the sine of pi over 2. Cosine of pi over 2, which is a quarter of a rotation, is 0. Plus i times the sine of pi over 2 is equal to 1. And so this is equal to 0 plus 4 root 2i. Or you could just write it as 4 root 2i. This is a plus bi. So this is what I would call, well, you could bracket just that line, or you could bracket both of these if you want. This is standard form. And that's really the kind of a number that you would plot on the complex plane uh, instead of using the polar plane and, and the idea of a certain amount of rotation and, and then a certain distance away from the pole. All right, so that is how you find the product of two complex numbers, product of the r values and the sum of the theta values. What about a complex quotient? What about here where I am taking z1 and dividing it by z2? It's very complements very well the product that we just looked at. This time the radii will be divided, r1 over r2, and we need to be subtracting mm -hmm. our theta values. So let's do that. Oh, nice. We're given our complex numbers already in polar form. I do have one issue though. Normally, Look at the, actually just underneath me here. Look, this says z1 equals r1 cosine theta 1, etc. See the r1? See these parentheses that are here? Look down here at these complex numbers. I don't see an r value in front of these, and I don't see any parentheses wrapped around these. What's my r value? It's 1. We've got a, an invisible r value. It's so simple and so basic and so small that it almost fools us. So please be aware here that r is equal to 1, and on this or for this complex number, the r value there is also equal to 1. And I should call those r1 and r2. Perfect. 70 is our theta 1 value. 230 degrees will be our theta 2 value. And let's find ourselves a complex quotient. Z1 over Z2 is equal to R1, which is a 1, divided by R2, which is also a 1, times the quantity, cosine. Theta 1 is 70. And theta 2 is 230 plus i times the sine of the same stuff. Now we have to do subtraction, which is dangerous. So 200, because I always mess up my subtraction, I stink at arithmetic. So 230 minus 70, let's do it backwards. If I take away 30, it gets me down to 200 and another 40, so that would be 160. So this is negative 160 is the theta value. I would say that it is sort of unorthodox or atypical to express a final answer of a complex number in polar form using a negative angle measure. So what I'm going to do is add 360 degrees to both of these angle measures. We're always allowed to add as many multiples of a full rotation as we want to. 
because that's how we achieve a coterminal angle. So this is the cosine of 200 plus I times the sine of 200. So my final R value is still equal to one and my theta value is equal to 200. So there is a complex quotient for you and the next thing we're going to look at uh, here is a, another problem that you could try. I will just get you started on this one, uh, but I might save this one for later and use this in class, or if one of my students wants to look at it in class, they can request to have a look at this. The R1 value, because you do need to take these two complex numbers and first write them in polar form. So R1 is going to equal two root two, and R2 will equal one root two or just the square root of two. Your theta one value, and you should calculate these, these things for yourselves, uh, depending on your level of comfort with this topic and the process so far. Uh, theta one, however, is going to equal the tangent function or the inverse tangent function is going to return a theta value of negative 45 degrees. You could proceed using the negative 45 you're about to do some arithmetic with it, which is very doable, or if you wanna add 360 degrees to that right away, then you're using uh, to 315 degrees. Your theta two value is going to be the same. And from there, I will leave you to do the arithmetic. And I'm going to move into our next segment where we're going to talk about, <coughs> excuse me, uh, powers and roots of complex numbers. I'm actually splitting that into two. First, I'm going to talk about powers, and then there will be another segment about taking roots of complex numbers like the square root, third root, fourth root, that kind of stuff. So please click on the box that is just below me in order to join me for the next segment where I'm going to take a complex number in polar form and raise it to, I won't tell you what power, you just have to come join me to find out, but I'm going to raise it to an exponent, all right? See you there. Thanks.